Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Elevate Your End Game with your host, Cameron Nichols with Coach with Cam. And Megan Wing with the Career Fulfillment Initiative. Woo-hoo. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Today, we are talking about recharging your social battery. That's and me. Megan brought this idea to me. And she's like, I think I have a good idea for the podcast. And then she told me, I was like, this is my jam. We have and- to talk about this. <laughs> Full disclosure, this is all thanks to the Hamashima family. Grace, Sam, Ellie, if you are listening to this, thank you for this idea. I went over to their house and Ellie is the youngest sister and I coach Grace and we're like best friends from high school. And Ellie was going to come out to hang out with us at the fire. And the reason she was like, I've been to a lot of social gathering gatherings today and I'm just going to have to recharge my social battery. And I was like, chef's kiss that's so good that describes how i feel so much of the time (laughs) seriously well yeah when it comes to recharging the social battery it's like okay what's your limit for the week Mm -hmm. the day the type of social interaction like are you aware of what drains your energy well and i think this is interesting because as most people see both of us we have very different personality types. Like I'm fairly extroverted and you're on the more introverted side. You actually coach introverts, you know, but I still, as an extroverted person still need to recharge my social battery all the time. Yeah. It's, like, because it still is like, you're still putting energy out there. Like yeah. you're giving energy out to other people. Exactly. And one of the things that like, I think is interesting. It's like, we don't have a percentage, you know, it's like, you can't look at your phone and you're like, Oh, like (laughs) my social battery is at like 56%. That means I can have like 0.5 social interactions from today until the end of the day. It doesn't work like that. So when you're thinking about how to find your social battery limit, there were two things I thought of. And then Kim and I were talking actually before this about another brilliant, like little piece of like, cause the type of interaction also matters. So here are two ways to figure out your social battery. Step one, you got to test it. There is no way around it. You have to test it to figure out what your social battery's limits are. So the first way is you could start at one social gathering and scale up, or you can start as many gatherings as you can and then scale it on back. There is no right or wrong way to do it but you have to figure it out for you. Yeah. It's completely individual. And so really start to pay attention to your body. Mm. Like, cause you'll feel a physical drain. You'll yeah. feel a mental fog. Probably uh, words will be start to become difficult. You won't look forward to things. Like it's, it's just like these little nuanced things that you have to discover for yourself and what that looks like. Yeah. Uh, But going back to what Megan said about the types of social interaction, um, because she was asking me what my limit, like my social limit was. And I was like, oh, a few times a week. And then I was like, actually, it kind of depends on the interaction. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, okay, if it's with like someone I'm really comfortable with, like one of my best friends, and like maybe one or two of them, it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine. Mm-hmm. But if it were a group where I don't know everyone, uh, or I don't have the same level of comfort, or there's just a lot of people and a lot of like stimuli happening, mm-hmm. that's like once a week max for me. <laughs> okay. That's, and that's really interesting because maybe that could depend on your personality type that just like, and also like another thing is like, I don't think like personality types are fixed ever. Like, no, it was it's interesting. Cause like one of my clients, she had done the Myers Briggs personality test. You can find it. I'll, I'll link it. Um, Love it. all my clients do it. Like as like they're in the whatever onboarding email, like I have all of them just like figure out what their personality is. And one of them, she was like, it's so interesting. I've done this test a bunch. I've always been an I, which is the, and it's the first letter at the beginning of it. So she's always been an introvert. And she's the, when we did our test, she switched to extrovert. So it's like, none of these things are just fixed. This is who you are, but that was an interesting, like little tidbit. 
Well, it is because it's, it's shaped by, it's you in that moment as you're yeah. taking the test. Exactly. And yeah, so it's, there's, there's a, is it called confirmation bias? Oh there's yeah. Some type of bias in there uh-huh. um, that, that affects the score when you take it. Well, and that's also interesting because it, like, it's almost like, um, like finding like your astrological sign, like they found another sign and it's like, all of us believed like as a Taurus, it was like, I believed I was really stubborn, but it's like, that isn't even my sign anymore. And it's like, we have confirmation bias for who we think we are. And especially when we're given like those personality types and traits, it's like, oh yes, I do fit this mold. Uh But it's just interesting to bring it back to social interactions. It's like your social battery could change based on who you're with, based on what type of social gathering, based on whatever is going on for you as a person. But I think it's important just in this moment, and you can maybe test it out every year, but to just figure out what your limit is. Now, I haven't done the the test to figure out one-on-one group, anything like that, but I did realize something important. When I moved to Winston-Salem, I didn't know anybody. So I literally like joined this entrepreneurial group. And I put, I think I told you about this. I like posted a picture of me with like two thumbs up. And I was like, Hey, who wants to be friends? And I was so lucky, like 24 people kindly like reached out to me. We're like, yeah, let's grab coffee. So after that week, I went on 10 coffee or lunch dates in 10 things at night, or it was five, five for every weekday five during the day, five at night. So exhausting. I died. And you would think I would have learned that lesson, but I really didn't understand the concept of my social battery. So I was exhausted. And even for an extroverted person like me, I was like, this is way too much. So since I didn't have that idea and why we went to this podcast today is like, I didn't really know what my social battery was. So guess what happened last week, Cam? (laughs) 10 social (laughs) gatherings again. And it's like, almost it, like we recorded a podcast about it. Well, it's, it's exactly why we did the podcast <laughs> last week. And it's like, because I was like, I, it's like, if you don't learn from your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Right. Uh-huh. Like literally what happened. I didn't learn. So now that's why we want to do this podcast for you today. So you can figure out what actually feels good for you. And I think what I've realized is like four to five social interactions, any social interaction for me at this point feel good, but anything more than that it's too much. Well, and it's so interesting. So before we hit record, I, I had a light bulb moment Mm -hmm. just as like, we were starting to talk about it. And what I shared with Megan was I noticed on Sunday. So Sunday was a very busy day, had some friends, played some D and D learning, learning some stuff. (laughs) Um, and then later that night we had a dinner with some family and then we were going to see Hamilton, because mm-hmm. uh, it's touring in Salt Lake. And after the 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 D and D time with friends, like most of those friends, like they're high energy, um, excited. They're, they're very much like Megan, right? It's just like mm-hmm. happy sunshine, high energy. <laughs> and so then when we were talking, and she gave and gave that same energy. I noticed myself trying to match it Mm -hmm. and I'm like my energy, like I am a grounded energy. Yeah. I am the rock. I am calm. Like that's just kind of who I am. But when I get around these lovely people that I'm drawn to because they are the opposite of me, Mm -hmm. it becomes so draining because I'm trying to continually match their energy. Mm -hmm which is not authentic to me. And like, I hadn't okay. recognized that specifically until we started talking about this before we recorded. So I think that's something to keep in mind as well um, for anyone who, especially like with my clients as introverts, the world is geared towards extroverts, right? Mm-hmm. What, we, what we see, what we read, how we are socialized and taught to interact with others. It's very extroverted. And so a lot of introverts, myself included, thought we were broken or that we did something wrong that like, Mm -hmm. we just don't fit in with society. And it's like, that's not the case at all. Mm -mm. It's just a matter of being authentic 
to where your energy level is at and how you use that energy and stop trying to like continually try to reach. And I think that's really interesting because they're a coach that we both follow pretty closely. I'm actually working with her directly now, Stacy. She talks about how it was exhausting when she was going to networking events and things like that, just to meet people. And she realized it, it, it was because she wasn't being true to herself. And I just want to offer to any introverts out there, like I'm very drawn to introverts and like my boyfriend, Nick, we are polar opposites. Like if you were to meet us, you couldn't meet more two different people, but I'm drawn to him because I love that balance. And he likes the balance that I bring to his life too. And so it's not like that set in stone. Another interesting thing is that like after coach training and after like being coached for years, I finally made my brain a place where it was safe and fun and enjoyable to be. And I think I actually enjoy being alone with myself more than I ever thought I would as just a person. So it's like your personality types will change and whether you're introverted or extroverted or whatever you're feeling, even in the moment with person to person, it's like, know that that's okay, but also just make sure that you are doing what's true to you so you can show up as your best version of yourself. And I think that's the whole point of figuring out what your social battery is because you are actually figuring out how to show up as your best version of yourself in every situation, instead of trying to be someone you're not to impress somebody else or something like that. Yeah. It's about showing up in authentic confidence of like, yeah, you don't have to reach. You don't have to be like someone else. Like you just get to show up and be yourself and then go home yeah. and be yourself. You'll like be it's surprised. one of the most empowering things ever because it like it really is about embracing that flow mm-hmm. of life and energy and cycles and all of that fun stuff. <laughs> like yeah. go with the flow. Exactly. And I want to just another really quick tidbit is like I tried to be someone else for a very long time. So like my whole life. I mean, like I developed like alter egos because I felt like it was safe to hide behind someone I wasn't because then people couldn't judge me and they couldn't hurt me. So I, when I started my coaching business, I presented a lot of the same energy, the excited, um, brighter energy and someone who I care about very deeply in, she meant only love, but she was like, I would never hire you because you don't seem professional. And I said, Oh, even though she's literally not at all in my demographic is not anyone who would ever would coach with me. I took what that person said so seriously. And I changed myself for seven months from October to April. And I think, you know, the story where I became like the sage and I was just like, Oh, like I have to be the professional and no one even signed up. No one signed up to do a consult with me not one person. And that's because I wasn't being myself now business and life are two separate things. But I feel like when you have a personal business, like what we have, it is reflected in your business. And when you are not being yourself, it's not only that like people aren't attracted to you in social gatherings, but it's like, you're not attracting people who want to work with you or anything like that either. So when you are figuring out what your social battery is, even if it's one thing a week, if it's 15 things a week, don't judge it. Just do it. Be yourself because that's what the world wants more of. Totally. Well, and, and even if you don't own your own business, like there's not as much separation as corporate America likes to think that there is between work life and personal life Yeah, because you're, you're the same person. Right. And so yeah, show up authentically, figure out what that means to show up authentically you and be in the professional environment. Yeah. Cause I mean, like, yeah, there's some things you don't talk about. Cause like HR and all that stuff, like there's things that are appropriate and not appropriate for the workplace. And so it's like, yeah, you can still be authentic, find your people 
and know how much energy you have and can give and how you want to spend it. Beautiful. So quick recap, people, if you are looking to recharge your social battery, you have to test it to figure out what your social battery is. And then to actually recharge it, you have to come back to the authentic version of you that is able to show up in the, as your best self in the world, and then go out and try it out. It's all trial and error. Beautiful. Um, Megan, do you have anything coming up that you want to share with our peeps? No. Um, I would love to hear what you guys think are other fun ways to like recharge your social battery. I would love to hear what that, what you guys think about that. Um, if you guys want to work with me, that would be very fun. And so I am doing consults. So sign up in the link in the show notes. Super fun. It. Um, and I, a couple of weeks ago released, um, a new guided meditation <laughs> that I, I, I know we talked about it last week, but I still want to continue to put it out there. Like if you are yeah. overwhelmed, anxious, like go download the guided meditation and get those three mini trainings because like you guys, they're good. And I, I don't say that in like a braggadocious way. Yeah but I've watched people do the meditation and see the results. And then I hear about people who do the meditation and they tell me how powerful it was. And it's like, yeah, five minutes and you can calm your anxiety. You can calm your overwhelm and step into that authentic place for yourself. So also link in the show notes. Also link in the show notes. I totally forgot, Cam. I actually do have something coming up. <laughs> but yeah, definitely check out Cam's. I, I need to listen to them still because your girl is dealing with that all the time. Um, I, I'm so focused on NCC today, two weeks from now. I actually do have something um, that if you want to join, I want to teach you how to get double the work done in half the time. And so I'm going to be doing time management webinar. So check that out too. It'll be so fun. Ooh, love so, it. Oh, it'll be, um, February 21st, 22nd, 23rd. So like a jumpstart to President's Day weekend. Beautiful. So is it a three-day webinar or it's is the that like same webinar doing it three, three times? Yep. Okay. Back to back to back. Oh, good times. Yeah. I feel like it'll be fun. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I do have something going on. <laughs> Right. Watch the YouTube video guys. I'm like <laughs> drinking down my Ted Lasso cup, like thriving. <laughs> that is all we have for you guys today. Remember as always shining bright gives others permission to shine as well. Take care. <laughs>